guys welcome back to my channel I'm Kayla today I'm doing a book review on a book that my college roommate actually gave me for my birthday years ago like 10 years ago <laughs> god I'm old yeah so she gave me this book and she knew how much I loved reading but I never ever read it and I don't know why but I decided I finally wanted to read it it's been on my shelves for a while and it is called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, a novel by Mark Haddon. So this book is kind of, it's well known. Uh, it's been around for a little bit. It was, let's see, when, when was this published? Oh, he's also an illustrator, that's cool. 2003, so this was originally published in 2003. My book's a little. A little tore up so it's been out for a while and I am only just now getting to it but yeah um, I really I really enjoyed reading this it was different than anything I've ever read before which I like so as far as genre goes this is fiction it's contemporary fiction and it's largely about it's kind of about mental health because the main character, I, I think he's autistic. He is somewhere on the autism spectrum. And so he's different. And it's all told from his point of view. His name is Christopher, he's 15 years old. And this takes place in England. And it's so it's very different. Their lifestyle is, I don't live in England, I'm in America, so I mean they're, their culture is different but it was fascinating to be in Christopher's head and to see the world through his eyes it was really really interesting and different and I loved it I really loved the experience the book itself is not too big it is 226 pages long so it's a decent sized book but it's not too big at all I gave it four out of five stars I think all different kinds of people would love to read this I really do I think it could reach a big audience I think that people of all ages, I mean he's 15 and I think it can be relatable in many ways so I think it's suitable for many ages and all different kinds of people. I'm going to read you the back of it so that you can have an idea of what it's about if you've never heard of it. So the back of the book says, Christopher John Francis Boone knows all the countries of the world and their capitals and every prime number up to 7,057. He relates well to animals, but has no understanding of human emotions. He cannot stand to be touched, and he detests the color yellow. This improbable story of Christopher's quest to investigate the suspicious death of a neighborhood dog makes for one of the most captivating, unusual, and widely heralded novels in recent years. So yeah, when I first read the back of it, I was fascinated. I have always been very fascinated with people who are different. Autistic, Asperger's, any kind of, I don't even know if it's like a disease or an illness. I w is it a mental illness? Is it, like I don't know how to like label it or what group to put it in, I guess. But the fact is, is he's different. He's different than your average person. And it's all from his point of view and you're in his head and it's such an amazing story. So again, it's about Christopher. He's 15 years old. He lives with his, he lives with his dad in a little town in England and he goes to school and he's very smart. He has a rat named Toby and he loves playing computer games and he's so smart he loves math and he's insanely good at it and it's about his life it's about this period in his life where the, the opening scene is him coming across a dead dog a dog that he knows very well and he gets very confused about why this dog was killed he can tell that this dog was murdered and he really really loves and enjoys murder mysteries and reading books like Sherlock Holmes and stuff so he immediately decides that he is going to investigate 
the death of this dog and he wants to find out who killed this dog and that one decision kind of sets off this chain reaction of events that happen and we're along for the journey with him and it's just fascinating it's just an amazing story and we see him struggle we see the world in totally different ways and we see him fail we see him succeed and it really has opened up my eyes to people that are different than me and I really really loved it I loved that this was different I've never read anything like this before All right, so going forward, I probably am going to give out spoilers. So if you don't wanna know anything about this book, I suggest you stop watching now. The main thing I loved about this book was Christopher himself. He is such a unique person and I loved being in his head. I really did because it was so different. And I will say that before I read this book, I really don't have a lot of knowledge about people who have autism or who's on the autism spectrum or Asperger's or any other kind of, I don't know, quality that makes you different from your average person. I didn't know much about that, but I always kind of viewed it and lumped it into illnesses, you know, something that's, I don't want to say something that's wrong with you, but it's kind of treated that way and it's kind of taught that way that like, when you're autistic, almost like something is lacking or something like that. And so, you know, kind of like somebody who has a disease that, you know, is with them forever, like Crohn's disease. I don't think you can cure that. You have it forever. It's something you have to deal with. It makes you a little different and, you know, it's unfortunate. And I feel like a lot of times that's kind of how autism is treated. It's treated as something that is abnormal and something that can't cure, but almost like you would if you could. I don't know, but after reading this, I really, it changed my view and changed my mind. I mean, this is one book, you know, I'm not claiming to understand this topic or these kinds of people at all. Like I just, there's no way. But I don't see them as lacking something or not normal. They're just different. And a lot of times different is seen as bad or other, but it's not. Like it's literally to me, it's like, it's like we all have glasses that we see the world through and his are different than your average glasses. That's it. Like, because he's still processes things that we process. He processes emotions. He processes interactions with people. He has likes, he has dislikes. He has, you know, he learns and he he's good at stuff. He's bad at stuff. I mean, it's, it's exactly the same as people who are not autistic. It's just different. Like they just, it's just different. And I loved that because I loved that it changed my view of people who are autistic. And so I just loved that because he sees the world in a completely different way than I do. And I loved it. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Christopher, his personality, and that way you can get kind of a feel for him. So Christopher is 15 years old, he's in school. He lives with his dad, he has a pet rat, I think I said this. So, and he loves, he loves, he really liked the dog that was murdered in the beginning of the book. He really liked this dog, so he likes animals. He loves math and he's so good at it. He's very, very smart. He kind of has a photographic memory. I think he does have a photographic memory and because he can remember verba almost verbatim things he's read, things he's experienced. He says that like his memories, he can, it's like a movie that he can like rewind and pause and fast forward and skip around to like he he just his his brain is very much like a computer in the way that it stores information and can pretty easily access that information and so it's incredible so in many ways he is a genius he's 
he his abilities are incredible and it's amazing it's really amazing he's so insanely smart but what I loved is his way of looking at things his way of seeing the world is fascinating one of the things is he's not good at reading people's emotions and I find this so funny because he's able to understand these insanely complex mathematical equations and and stuff like that but when it comes to humans he is so confused. He gets overwhelmed because people are unpredictable. He really can't understand facial expressions. He says it's too much. They're, it's too much to remember. We're too complicated. But that's so like hard for me to grasp because I'm like, but you can, you can grasp these insanely difficult mathematical equations and problems, but it's so hard for him to be able to process social interactions and the way we talk tone body language there's i mean for the most part he's learned basics he's learned how to adjust and to adapt in the world kind of like he like kind of makes me think of like somebody who's lost a leg or two or lost their legs or lost an arm let's say they lost their right arm or whatever and they now have to adapt to life with only one arm and so things will be different and but you adapt you you make it work and he's he's like that so he is able to interact with humans and people and he is able for the most part to to decipher whether somebody is angry or sad or happy or whatever he also has a lot of likes and dislikes he has things that and I think we all kind of do this. For example, he does not like things that are yellow and brown. Like if his food is yellow or brown, he will not eat it. His food can't touch each other. He has like these little rules for things, you know? And I feel like we all kind of have stuff like that. So that's not weird to me. He does not like to be touched. He does not like, he does not like it. He will curl up in a ball and start screaming and I actually I don't like to be touched either I actually really hate being touched only by my boyfriend JC <laughs> I don't like giving people hugs I don't even really like hugging my own family as terrible as that is to say I just I don't like it I don't know but so I get that I totally get that um and he's he loves being alone he likes being in dark tight little spaces because it makes him feel safe and secure and I love that like he's just so unique and I just love all his little personality traits the book is written very interestingly so yes it's from Christopher's point of view all Christopher's point of view but in addition to that so in the very beginning I said how there is a dog that was killed well not only does he decide to investigate this and try and find the murderer, but he's also going to write about it. He's going to write a book. And so this whole book is, his, it's like his writing. It's his book. It's his notebook of everything that happened, how the investigation's going and everything. So it's kind of like his, it's not a diary, but it kind of is. And so that's the format it's in. And what I love is that throughout this book, there are so many like he'll he'll put in um pictures he'll put in graphs charts examples of stuff i just love it it's so it's it's a very unique read and i loved that so for example this page it shows all of the smiley faces and unhappy faces and he put this in his book to show like human emotions and these are the pictures he thinks about when he needs to process somebody else's face facial expression he also <laughs> he also shares several math problems with us and explains things in math terms which is so adorable and sometimes i cannot follow along so here we see like you know charts and stuff uh, <laughs> of him describing things and i just i adore it and there's a part in here where he lists all of his what does he call it he lists all of his behavioral problems okay it's really adorable so it's on page 46 so these are quote unquote his behavioral problems not talking to people for a long time not eating or drinking anything for a long time so these things happen not liking to be touched 
screaming when he's angry or confused, not liking being in really small places with other people, smashing things when he's angry or confused, groaning, <laughs> yeah, he groans a lot, especially when he's really stressed, not liking yellow things or brown things and refusing to touch yellow things and brown things, refusing to use my toothbrush if anyone else has touched it, not eating food if different sorts of food are touching each other, not noticing that people are angry with me, not smiling, and saying things that other people think are rude. Oh, also, doing stupid things, hitting other people, hating France, driving mother's car, and getting cross when someone has moved the furniture. So these are like his behavioral problems. And really, I mean, they're just personality traits. They're just things about him that are just different than other people. Yeah, so it's really fascinating the way that he, the way that he thinks about things, the way that he processes who he is himself and stuff. It's just really, it's really cool. So I really, really enjoyed the way that this book is written. It made it very interesting. It made it different. It made it, I love all the pictures. It's, it's really cool. It, it kind of felt like, I wasn't reading a book, but I was reading somebody's little notebook, you know, of this journey that they're on. So the whole thing starts where he is trying to discover who murdered this dog. And the more and more he investigates, uh, he notices that his dad it really doesn't want him to investigate. He thinks it's bothering other people and stuff, and it kind of is in some ways but what's really cool is that once he decides once Christopher decides that he's going to solve this murder he starts doing things that are out of his comfort zone he starts being real brave about certain things and trying new things and doing things that scare him and he's learning a lot from it and I just love that like it's really cool to see him struggle with this to not want to do something but then like thinking well I really want to s try and solve this so I'm gonna stick it out and I mean it's just like real amazing and he's very logical like I loved being in his head and kind of under and kind of seeing his thought process to see how he processes something that he, that's happened or something like that it's so fascinating to see how he how he comes up with solutions or stuff like that. It's really, really interesting. Oh, <laughs> and another thing about him I really <laughs> loved is that he can't tell lies. He cannot lie uh, because it is way too hard for him. It is way too hard because he says that in order to lie, you have to create something that's that didn't happen. And that's way too much work. He said that it's so hard for him. It's overwhelming. It's like, it's too much. That's why he can't lie. He just says things as they are because the act of coming up with a lie, coming up with an excuse, coming up with a story is just so overwhelming and so tiring that it is not worth it to him. And I love that. I think that is so funny. <laughs> but he does do he does do white lies, which is basically like you don't tell the whole lie. You kind of omit stuff. So he'll do that occasionally. It's so funny. And one thing that sometimes when I was reading this, I started feeling like he talks very similarly to Jack in the book Room by Emma Donahue. If you've ever read that, Jack, th that book is written from a little boy's point of view and his name's Jack. And Jack sees the world in such a different way too. And a lot of times when I was reading this, it reminded me of Jack. And I'm going to share a quote with you that not only did I love and not only did I find very beautiful, but it made me think of Jack and I just loved it. So this quote is, it's on page 103. And this is one of those books, it's real quotable. There are so many, like I can see myself rereading this and I want to go and like underline my favorite quotes because he has so many thoughts and ideas and the way he words things is just so much, so many times it's just so different and so beautiful and I just I love it like oh I just love that he sees the things I see but in a totally unique way and he describes them in a totally unique way and I just love it so he's talking about a day when it rains and he says on the fifth day which was a Sunday it rained very hard 
I like it when it rains hard. It sounds like white noise everywhere, which is like silence, but not empty. And I just loved that. I was like, yeah, you know, the sound of falling rain is like white noise. It's, it's kind of like a fan going on and that steady noise. And he says, it's like silence. And, and I'm like, yeah, silence is kind of has that same trait where it's, you know, it's this, it's the same, but silence is empty. And so he's saying that rain, the sound of rain is like silence, but not empty. And I just love that. I'm like, who thinks like that? Like who thinks of things in that way? And I just, oh, I just love it because he, what he's doing is he's making me see the world in a different way. And I love it. So overall, I mean, a lot happens in this book and what I really liked about it was what I liked about it was how brave he was and how courageous and I mean he did a lot of hard things it, it kind of is like this gradual thing but he still is constantly throughout the book like conquering his fears doing things even though he's terrified even though he's not good at it he figures things out he problem solves it's it's fascinating and it's amazing and it's real inspiring because we all have fears. We all have dreams. He has dreams. We all have fears. He has fears. And it's like, it's kind of like an inspiration to even though you're terrified, you can do it. You know, face your fears, overcome those obstacles, work hard. And he does. And it, and it's amazing. That's like one of my favorite one of my favorite lessons of this book. Oh my gosh, there's this thing. Okay, so, oh, it's so cute. So, Christopher doesn't like to be touched, right? So, there's this thing that him, his mom, and his dad have created, which is the exact same thing as hugging. So, he doesn't like to be touched. So that means that he doesn't like when his parents hug him. But there's so many times where his parents want to hug him so bad and where he needs what you get from a hug too. And so they came up with this thing, which is so cute. And it means that they're hugging and this is what they do. One of them puts up their hand like this and spreads their fingers out. And then Christopher will do the same with one of his hands and he'll make all their finger print, all their fingers touch each other. And this is how they hug. And it's so cute. It's just when I saw it, when I read that, I was like, oh my God, this is so precious. Kill me. Like, and so there are times where things are hard or like his, they get into a, him and his dad get into a big fight and his dad goes like this, you know, like, I'm sorry. It's just, oh, it's precious. I love it. I love that they came up with something that worked for them all, you know, to still hug. It was just, uh, I loved that. I also really love the relationship between him and his dad and his family in general. It's complicated. Like it's very, nothing is idyllic, you know? There are family problems. There are, you know, relationship problems, na problems with neighbors, problems with friends. And it just shows, it, it just, I don't know. It just felt so real. It felt so realistic and I loved that. It made it so easy to just fall into this book and be and believe everything, you know? You know, it's complicated, but I do love how much his dad loves him. And it's just such a beautiful relationship. And I love how how in the end they he finds a way to bring them back together, you know? Kind of. Like they're not to get the mom and dad aren't together in the end, but they are in the same place and they're they're both taking care of Christopher you know they both love him so much and it's not easy that's the other thing too is it, it really shows the struggle of the parents or whoever is taking care of somebody who is autistic or on the autism spectrum that sometimes it can be difficult because they're different it can be it can be hard to do things that other people do and really what it is is they they just have to adapt as well they just have to tweak things 
and do things a little differently, but they can still do the same stuff, like going to the store, going shopping, taking him somewhere. It can be a little difficult, but if they just do things a certain way, that's a little different, it works. So I love their dedication to their son. I love how much they love him. And I love that we see their struggle because it's real, you know, it's real, it's honest. I don't think there was anything I didn't like. But the only reason I gave it four out of five stars instead of five out of five stars is because I generally give five out of five stars to books that like blow me away that just have make me have an insane reaction and are overwhelming a lot of times and this was so good and so amazing but it didn't give me that feeling so but it was an insanely good book like it's beautiful and it's it's interesting and it's different and it's different because of the way it's written, because of the content, because of the fact that you are in his head. You know, it's not like you're from the point of view of somebody who, like, it's not the point of view of his dad or his mom. It's his point of view. And, and that's very different. And I just loved it. Also, one of the interesting things that happened in the end is he decides that he wants to go find his mom and he wants to go live with his mom in London. And so... A good chunk of the end of this book is his journey from his hometown to London and all of his obstacles and it is difficult oh my god like reading that section reading those pages when I was done and so many times throughout I felt so exhausted and overwhelmed and my head hurt and I had anxiety and it was a it was a really good writing tool because it it made me feel a little bit at least what he was feeling because the whole time he's doing this journey he is poor thing he is struggling I mean oh there's so many obstacles he gets scared so many times he gets confused so many times his heart is beating so fast he's doing so many things that he just his natural instinct is to not do and but but in the back of his head he has this goal and he is so determined to reach it and I loved it but it was amazing how at the end of it I, I like took a step back and I was like oh my god that was very stressful it was not a pleasant part of the book for me to read it was hard and I love that because it mimicked what he was going through you know it kind of gave us a little taste of how difficult that could be and this is just a book I mean I wasn't even I wasn't even there in the train stations and stuff like going through the same things he did oh god the struggle As far as the setting goes, I really did like the setting. I liked that this took place in England. It was interesting to see their their vocabulary is a little different, their slang, the, the kind of stuff that he eats. I didn't understand any of it. Not really, I'm not sure exactly. Like I couldn't picture what he was talking about. I'm like, I don't know what that is uh, a lot of the times. But, but I loved the descriptions of like the houses and the fact that they use a train all the time or the subway and it's just it's different from my lifestyle you know it's different from us in America and so I really did like the setting I thought that was cool and different and uh, unique and so I like that as far as the characters go I, I liked the characters I especially like him his mom and his dad and then there's a woman that he talks about a lot. Her name is Siobhan and she works at his school and she kind of she kind of reminds me of like his therapist kind of but also his kind of like helper person but not like she doesn't like hold his hand and like help in the world. She just he comes to her a lot and they talk and discuss and she's she's mentioned so many times throughout this book because she gives him so many ideas she gives him coping mechanisms she teaches him about how to write and how to help him write these like she'll she helped write the footnotes she helped with the grammar she helped like it's just she's you can tell that she's clearly somebody who really cares about him and who knows him very well and who helps him in his way you know it's not like she's she's trying to make him do things that other people do or other like no she she knows his personality traits she knows his rules and she adapts to that and she helps him function 
in his way. It's so it's so cool. So I loved Siobhan and and how we we meet her throughout this book. I like her. Some of the some of the characters weren't that pleasant. There were some that were not very nice, but for the most part, I really did like the characters. And of course, Christopher is my favorite character. And his little his little rat Toby is adorable. But yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was, it was easy to read. It was so enjoyable. There were times where I laughed and times where I almost cried. Times where my, my heart was broken a little bit and times where I was stressed. I mean, I just, I feel like, I feel like this is a book I will definitely remember. Like it's not a forgettable book. It's different. I love that I got a totally different perspective. And a lot of times this is why I read. Not only is it to, you know, be a part of a story, but it's also to, to get different perspectives, you know, to be in other people's heads, to see life in other ways that are different from mine. And, and I think that's good because this changed my mind about something, you know? Like I thought one way before I read it and it changed my mind and I loved it. Like, because a lot of times, I hate to admit it, but like when I would hear about people who have autism and stuff, I felt bad for them, you know? I, I felt bad for them. And after reading this, it wasn't really like that. It kind of changed my perspective into you don't have to feel bad for them because they're just different you know uh they struggle we struggle they just have different kinds of struggle and because our society is our way they tend to struggle more you know they tend to have more against them which is sad because it could have easily been the other way around like he could have been the norm. If the world had worked where he was the norm and the way we are, you know, people who do not have autism, if that was the other, I mean, it's just kind of how it happened. It's just the way his brain is. Like, that's kind of what this made me see. And I know this isn't true for everybody, but I feel like autism is just a different way of living, a different way that your brain works. And it's fascinating because it's so unique. And maybe it's really fascinating because it's something I really don't know anything about. And this is kind of my first time really experiencing anything like this and learning about it. I just, I liked that it, it changed my perspective a little bit. It changed my opinion a little bit. And I really, I really love that in a book. So I definitely recommend this to just about anybody. It's easy to read. It's not long. You learn a lot, you you laugh, and it's a good story. It's an interesting story. I mean, there's a lot of, it's it's pretty dramatic too. There's some things that happen in here that are pretty dramatic. And so, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a page turner and uh, I really, I just really enjoyed it. And I hope to read more books that are like this in the future. So, so yeah, I guess that's about it for that. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read this and what you thought about it, if you liked it, what parts did you like and stuff. I definitely want to talk about it. So like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time. Bye!